Hello guys, let's look at what is called the Takotsubo syndrome or Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. So by way of definition, Takotsubo syndrome is a problem with the heart. It's a cardiac condition uh, that typically presents uh, as an acute heart failure, which means it presents like a heart failure. Uh, with distinctive regional left ventricular contraction profile, often triggered by emotional or physical stress. So what all these big grammar means is that Takotsubo syndrome is a heart condition that is typically triggered by extremes of emotional or physical stress. So whenever someone is subject to extreme stress, either physical or emotional stress, it can affect the person's heart. And typically, it causes what we call this Takotsubo syndrome. It's majorly found in postmenopausal women. Um, obviously, when a woman has gone through menopause, she, ha she has an increased risk of developing heart conditions, cardiovascular conditions, including this Takotsubo syndrome. Uh, however, the exact cause of why it's much more common in postmenopausal women is not known. It presents like a heart attack so it presents in a similar way to a coronary artery obstruction however it's different in in, in takotsubo syndrome there's actually no blockage in the coronary vessels so this image actually shows us uh, what happens in takotsubo uh, cardiomyopathy so there is there is a ballooning of the apex of the heart and that ballooning is you know resembles a japanese octopus trap so a japanese octopus trap which is called takotsubo so that's actually where this condition got its name from in terms of pathophysiology the exact cause of takotsubo syndrome is not known however it's thought to be related to excess catecholamine so excess you know adrenaline no adrenaline you know related to those extremes of of stress um, and of course, hyper -sym um, sympathetic hyper arousal uh, are, are the mechanisms that are thought to be responsible for this syndrome. As I've said, um, there is this apical ballooning, regional wall motion abnormality, reduced left ventricular ejection fraction are typical features in Takotsubo um, syndrome or cardiomyopathy. How does this Takotsubo syndrome present? So it presents, we said, it happens um, most commonly in postmenopausal women uh, with identifiable precipitating stress. So extremes of stress, either you know chronic stress especially, and symptoms similar to acute coronary syndrome. So it presents in a similar way to a heart attack, and it can also present um, like a heart failure. You know, the person becomes short of breath. You know gasping for air of course i you know with chest pain and, and and all of that so it presents as a medical emergency acute cardiac chest pain st segment elevation we'll do an ecg elevated cardiac biomarkers you know things like the troponin uh, creatine kinase could be elevated so these patients will develop severe chest pain severe shortness of breath which would make us believe that they're having a, a cardiac emergency. So these patients will typically be presenting in the emergency room uh, for evaluation. Uh, when they do an ECG, you might see some features that might make you think this could be, um, you know, a heart attack. So the, some ECG changes, elevation of troponin uh, is quite common. Another thing that is common in Takotsubo is elevation of the BMP, the brain natural erratic peptide. So which might also begin to make you think, oh, does this person have a heart failure as well? So you can see at the bottom here, you need to rule out an acute coronary syndrome. So an urgent coronary angiography to exclude a heart attack, either a STEMI or an NSTEMI, is typically done. This is a cardiac angiogram or a, you know, a ventriculograph that shows um, the ballooning. I think that's the ballooning there, the ballooning of the heart or the apex of the ventricle. Now, how is this Takotsubo cardiomyopathy managed? 
The good thing about Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is that it has a very good prognosis, so the outcome is very good because obviously there is no, uh, there is no through you know um, blockage of the coronary vessels, so so the outcome is typically good in this syndrome. Um, so most patients who have spontaneous recovery, most patients recover normal cardiac function without any intervention. In terms of risk stratification, it has to be so risk stratification should be considered for treatment. So the patient should be considered for treatment uh, based on left ventricular ejection fraction and risk of complication. So even though the outcome is usually positive or usually good, some of these patients might actually develop um, you know, um, long-lasting uh, cardiac complications. So medications um, like beta blockers and ACE inhibitors may be used to lower the risk in patients that have left ventricular ejection, uh, reduced left ventricular ejection fraction or reduced left ventricular ejection function. So patients that are presenting in heart failure uh, might actually benefit from some of these heart failure medications as well. It's really good to avoid inotropes because if you look at the cause or the pathophysiology of this Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, you can see that excess catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine, has you know have been have been um, have been you know implicated. So it's really good to avoid inotropes, you know, uh, sympathomimetics, which might obviously which can obviously exacerbate or worsen the condition. So follow-up is usually important after the patient has been discharged. Um, follow the patient up for three to six months to ensure that they don't develop other cardiac complications. Adjust medication therapy based on the patient's left ventricular function. So usually, typically, these patients will be discharged back to their GP, and the GP will arrange a follow-up maybe in two weeks post-discharge, see how they are doing, decide if they need to make any adjustments to their medications. Uh, and then decide if they need to actually come off those medications eventually. So in conclusion, Takotsubo syndrome is a unique form of acute heart failure, often triggered by stress. And from the, at the beginning, we said both physical and emotional or psychological stress can actually bring this on. So any recognition and appropriate management are crucial for opti optimal outcomes. And actually, most patients will have optimal outcomes without prolonged or chronic complications. A multidisciplinary care involving the cardiologist, the emergency physician, internist, even the GP, because eventually the patient will be discharged back to the GP for follow-up. So all of us as doctors and even nurses, you know, uh, will all play very crucial roles in ensuring that these patients have the best possible outcome. So when you see those movies where someone has a heart attack, or rather when someone has a heartbreak from a failed relationship or someone has worked themselves to the, to, the, you know, to the ground and they eventually develop cardiac problems from too much stress, too much, you know, too much work or loss of a loved one, all those kind of you know, um, stormy emotions can actually lead to uh, cardiac problems. So it's actually worth knowing.